Hello everyone and a welcome to the stream. This is Otaku Showboat and today it is good to be back, honestly. Uh, it's been a very long time since I've streamed or created videos in general and uh yeah, it's it's good to be back to it. Today Oh gosh, I just there's so many thoughts going through my mind at the uh start of this. I think we're just going to we're just going to get into it today. We are playing Factorio. We have several mods enabled, uh including all of these primarily it's Angel's mods, Bob's mods. And, in particular, Space Extension, which I just completed a game with these. Um, yeah, it's uh, interesting, to say the least, because it will require... It will require scale. A lot of scale. Now, of note, among these mods, I do have Mad Clowns extensions. So we will have extra ore types and processing options available to us. Uh, we will have loaders that I hope scale with the new scaling and Bob's logistics because recently they default to new values faster values actually now uh, we have even distribution that uh, is more of a quality of life thing than anything else we will be making great use of that in the early game in particular we have bottleneck which We'll put a little light on uh, the machines to tell us if they are resource starved or if they are operating at peak efficiency. Um, so the one thing to note, we also have alien biomes with the high res terrain. Uh, the one thing to note is at the time of this recording, uh, angels Petrochem. Basically, Angel's Mods had a rather significant update uh, in the past few days, and I noticed an issue in Angel's Petrochem. Well, partly an issue, partly a balance thing that I think is a little bit off. Uh, there is a new fluid that was introduced in Angel's Petrochem that only produces at 5 units per craft when the consumers consume 50 units per craft. Uh, so I, it's a, the scale's a little bit off. Every other fluid, or gas, but gases are considered fluids, um, every single fluid is produced in increments of at least 50 except for this new one which is five <laughs> so it's a little bit weird compared to everything else that currently exists <laughs> so what i have done myself is i have modded angels petrochem for myself to set it from five to fifty per craft uh because at the moment because I haven't gotten any response uh, from Angel on the forum to my report about this, uh, I've just set it to 50 from 5 for now, uh, until there is a response I, either saying it's intended to be 5, or, oh crap, I just it was a typo, it's supposed to be 50 or tw even 25 <laughs> would be good for it um five is just a bit too low uh but that that's something that'll come to a little bit later on down the line 
then the other part is that the that particular liquid didn't have a recipe to void that liquid or to get rid of excess of that liquid. So I've gone ahead and I've added that in. It's interesting because none of the recipes to get rid of a liquid or a gas happen to... They're not coded specifically as recipes in his mod. They're assigned a category that a function rolls through, like a script, and it adds in those void recipes for you. But you have to define what category the fluid is. Uh, so I've defined the category as a, uh, quote, water fluid that will be voided in a clarifier. Um, and we'll get into all of that. If that sounds a bit technical, trust me, I will, uh, I will get to the point where I will be explaining that once, uh, once we get there. And it will all eventually make sense that, uh, that is the goal, is that it will eventually make some degree of sense. So we're going to be starting up a new game. Uh, personally, now I've already gone through and I've made some changes. I don't like biters. I think they're uh, unnecessary tedium in the long run. Uh, they're okay as a challenge at the early game, but they just become more tedious. On, if a, if a playthrough is going to be 100 hours plus on a map, you don't want to be dealing with biters that entire time. In fact, it just serves to extend dramatically how much time you spend on a map. Some may want that. I do not. So I've turned biters off. I've also set the starting area size a bit smaller because we are running resource spawner overhaul. And, well, A, I don't even know if starting, so, defining the size area of the starting zone even really matters with resource spawner overhaul, uh, at least in this UI, because it has its own set of settings, but meh. Whatever might help, might help. Uh, and I've turned off pollution, because the only reason for pollution to exist is to feed biters, and since we don't have biters... <laughs> Uh, there's no need to have pollution taking up uh, processing, so... Uh, and I also currently have research queue set to after the game is finished. This may or may not be a good idea. Um, part of me doesn't want to be spammed with the pop-up for a new tech all the time, but part of me also is worried that I will not notice that I have gotten a specific tech that I'm looking for uh, so that I can transition. Um, so there is a bit of uh, balance there. Uh, so I'm gonna just I'm just gonna leave it for after the game is finished. Now in the settings I haven't checked for one particular thing. I've reset most everything to default. In start startup, everything is default right now. And I just want to make sure... Alright, so pure water is on, but I'm looking specifically because there is somewhere... Might be under map. No, it's somewhere in Bob's mods. There is a setting to enable here. I think it's this. I just didn't know if it was enabled by default. So there's, Bob's Knobs comes with pumps that you can place that essentially 
give you free water, water, purified water, or lithia water. And they're a little bit imbalanced, to say the least. Uh, but I thought that was a setting that had to be manually enabled to use them for the for the recipes to show up in them. The I, the actual item that you can craft that gives you that ability will always exist, from what I could tell by default. Um, but you have to add an option somewhere in here to enable those recipes, but I don't see it off hand. It would be in here, but it may have just changed to just be enabled to here. Water mining pump jacks? I don't know. Because Bob's mods also had updates while I was playing on the previous map, so now the default transport belt speed per tier is 15, so the basic belts now move at 15 per sec- 15 units per second, um, just to better- I get- it's to better match how the game calculates the movement of items on belts. <laughs> It has to be some sort of multiple that 12.5 variations didn't quite work all the time, so you weren't truly getting the displayed value of the speed of the belt uh, in certain circumstances. So the new default is 15, which actually makes the... This makes the highest tier of belt 90 items per second, which is quite nice actually higher than 90 and uh things happen to sprites uh yeah it it's weird at higher than 90 um things tend to uh the graphics tend to break a little bit but the actual uh performance is still there. The actual movement of items, they're still moving, but it will occasionally look like they're stuck. Uh, so if it's on by default, then I'll just go with that for the pumping. Uh, but I will choose to try to <laughs> Choose, choose to try to not to use it. Um, now here, I think this... Yeah, this will need some adjustment. So I'm going to set coal to zero. So what this is, this is even distribution. Uh, if you hit shift plus C, it will feed items automatically into nearby uh, machines like directly out of your inventory so if you have items that can feed a machine in your inventory it will automatically feed them but internally it wants you to keep a certain amount of coal by default and in the early game I don't want that in fact, I'm going to just set this to like 5 units. Default is 400. I'm overriding it by adding this in here to 5. And then I also want the opposite for wood. I want to keep wood in my inventory uh, and not use it for fuel um, at the start of the game. So th those are two additions. Uh, by default, it also includes in this list 800 iron plates, 600 copper plates, 
zero artillery shells for some reason. Don't know why that's there. And then there's stone... There's steel plates of 600 and stone bricks of 400. <laughs> May want to set that to 4,000 at some point, but... That's just what's displayed here on the inventory cleanup. In the actual settings file for even distribution, there are additional defaults that are set for various items, including coal. And it's set to like 400 or something, so I have to override it. Um, and wood is, I guess, set to zero or not set, so I have to set something there. Um... I have changed the clock. This is another one of Bob's mods, actually. Uh, the clock, it is set to 12 hour mode, seven segment green, showing time. There's also an extended UI piece that'll show total playtime that I will have up as well. It also shows evolution factor, but that's not going to be part of this. So what are all of these? We will get to that, but in particular, I'm just going to note that I am not setting anything above default here. Some of this doesn't, some of this from the UI doesn't matter because we have resource spawner overhaul right here. And a lot of those settings are overwritten by RSO. Uh, so if you really want to make changes to the richness or the size of your ore patches, you have to make them in here in the map settings. I am leaving this on default settings, which will apparently give us oil and ore in our starting zone. What I have changed here only is this reveal spawned resources checkbox. What this does, it does mess with the aspect of exploration a little bit because it will automatically show us nearby resources that have spawned. So anything that RSO spawns will appear on the map. Uh, and you'll see that the map will be black except there'll be these little pockets where it shows the whole of each ore patch. Um, this is personal preference. Uh, it just sort of just forces the game to show you what's been spawned, and it prevents the map from, and the mini map in particular, from showing you a partial numerical value for how much ore is in a specific location. Ugh. That is, that is the whole point of that. So you don't make decisions based off of a partially revealed piece of the map. Uh, and then, of course, loaders, which we have. Uh, by default, it's set to be disabled to use for trains because apparently that requires a lot of processing. I've set it for everything, partly because I don't really use trains all that much. Maybe that can be something that we try to learn together. Oh, I know. This is uh, going to be an interesting time. Because I tend not to use many trains at all. I use belts. And then if I have robots, I will use robots. But I much, actually much prefer belts. And we shall see how long it takes me to move to robots um looking at the preview won't really matter because our rso won't really show the resources on that map but what i will note before we begin one last thing the terrain page water scale is increased coverage is decreased same for trees and cliffs are off because screw cliffs. <laughs> the way the resource generation works for water and trees is that the higher the scale, the bigger the distance from each other they are. 
and then reducing coverage also helps to increase that distance between the patches. So there's going to be fewer, larger bodies of water and patches of trees. Because I don't want to be stymied in the growth of the factory by blockers, essentially, in the early game. So, uh... I guess with that, all of that said, we are ready to begin. Pick a character class. This is free play. I know this is free play. Um, do I want to actually use any of these character classes is the first question. I haven't decided this. I haven't given this any thought. Um, I have given this no thought whatsoever. Do I go with a slower character at the start? Fighter doesn't really matter to me. Do I go with the inventory or do I go with hand smelting? I'm gonna go I'm gonna I'm gonna do builder. Uh, I'm gonna do that this time. We move incredibly slow. Also the uh, alien biomes mod. In certain terrain types, we'll reduce our speed by 100%. So that's fun. Things like uh, sand will slow you down considerably. Now what I'm looking for specifically here, see, we've got crude oil, we've got rocks. Oh god, I am not used to these. These are really small. Oh, thank you, RSO. Thank you so much. So, we need coal, sapphite, and steratite in particular, and some... Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. And then what's automatically been shown to me is this steratite way down here. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Personally, I would prefer having much, much, much larger... Uh, resource patches and never have to worry about anything ever about moving oh and then of course I should mention we have a I have a mod installed that inc that gives you a technology to research that increases the speed of your hand crafting so that's gonna be f interesting especially once it becomes completely irrelevant uh, when I have a full setup to produce everything. So right now I'm just looking for coal, in particular coal and stone. And wood from these fallen trees is always nice. Looks like this particular map ha actually has a lot of these large rocks, which is really nice. Oh, I am forgetting the most important thing. Uh, slash. I think this is the command. Uh, 0, 71, 171. There we go. So, in case you're wondering, that particular numerical value, set of values, is cobalt. So, I am now. I am now cobalt. Oh, and you can't you can't really see it behind me putting in that uh, command, but sorta. It's zero seventy one one seventy one. Just changes the player color to cobalt. You can do that for any color, any color imaginable. You can even put words in for common colors like yellow, red, blue. Orange CN. I am a fan of CN. Uh, Rubite, Tritinium, and Sapphirite up there. Good to know. 
Oh, I'm so slow. Oh, uh, especially coming off of a map that... Oh, this is so small. This is tiny! What in the hell? Alright. Well, we're gonna be... Expanding, clearly. Actually, what I'm gonna do... I'm not gonna keep this stuff here. I'm gonna put it... I'm gonna place this so that I can place these in a circle around it. Now remember what I said about shift C? It evenly distributes the coal. And then this is going to be crushing sapphirite. So! Angels mods, sapphirite, and rubite, and steertite, and bobmonium, and somewhere else is crotinium up here. Crotinium and f all these other ores, ore types added by Mad Clown, the uh, Phosphorite, and the Antitate, and the somewhere there might be like Progalina. All that stuff is not iron, copper, tin, lead, silicon, you know, the things that you actually need. Also, I'm going to have alt mode on uh, the whole time. Uh, the entire time, and I'm going to put a stone furnace down, add some coal to it, and stick in a la crushed sapphirite. And eventually we'll be able to make another two burner mining drills. And all I have to do is just click on our burner ore crusher, which is crushing sapphirite, and we can then smelt sapphirite directly into iron plates. So each of these types of ore will smelt directly into a specific type of plate. Each of the ones by Angel will go into a specific type of plate. Although honestly, what what does Crotinium do again? I forget. Slash, I don't think I've directly smelted Crotinium. Um. Lead? No, that's that's rubite. Rubite is lead. Plates. Lead plates. Bobmonium is tin. Oh, we can also handcraft uh, stone from this crushed stone that we get as a byproduct of crushing sapphirite. I could just shift C. So. This is giving us some iron plates to start with, and with this I will get uh, two burner miner drills. And with these burner miner drills, I'm going to go to the coal patch. Oh, our tiny, our poor little coal patch that exists up here, covered in rocks. The reason why I wanted two of these drills for this is because they will feed each other. Just add at least one unit of coal and they will feed each other. And now now I have a supply of coal until it runs out. Until it's been mined out. So the whole point of the early game, get electricity. That is, that is the uh, whole point of this phase, and this phase takes time. Uh, up to a significant amount of time. Let's see if we can't do it within 20 or 30 minutes from now. Definitely before I have lunch, that would be ideal. Because we, today I will be streaming. I started about half an hour ago already, and we are just starting the game. Um, I'll be taking a break in about an hour from now, uh, for lunch, and then be back, and we'll stream until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. So, in total, uh, between the hours of 11 and 2. These I'm going to add right in here. I will 
grab the coal that has been produced. And then shift C adds even amounts of coal to everything. Although what I might want to do is yank out a lot of this, make uh, a few more, a few more stone furnaces. Uh, I'm going to want eight placed, eight placed. Actually, no, I'm going to want another four uh, because these four are going to have stone to make stone bricks. Oh, right. I also have to... So for even distribution to work properly with Shift C, it can only add, this is Control, left click, drag to do that. Uh, in order for it to actually add the crushed sapphire, you have to uh, put some in to begin with to define what needs to go into those furnaces because they take in basically any a, a lot of different items you can put into a furnace it's not defined per se we will eventually be able to build uh, types of furnaces where we can actually define what we want to insert into them but by that point there's not really going to be much uh, direct smelting of ores like this. We aren't going to be using them for much besides the stone bricks, which is a shame, actually. It's, it's a little odd how every other early game thing has a much more complex way of increasing the efficiency of the production of it except for stone bricks <laughs> now as we get more mining drills right now I'm going to actually extend my production of coal I apparently extended it one too far. Uh, hitting Q will make a copy of what you're hovering over. Just for reference. Also, let's grab what's been produced. Make all of the things. Right now, you can see I am focused exclusively on the iron, what will, what is iron production, and, uh, and coal. I might at some point confuse the cat right next to me because his name, his name is Cole. Except his name is spelled the K, K O L E. But he's just sleeping at the moment. We shall see how long it takes before he starts meowing at me for lunch. He, uh, he has medication that is a steroid that, uh, makes him a very, very hungry, 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 hungry kitty. Especially on the days that he takes it. And that happened to be today. I'm just cleaning. Don't mind me while I clean. And I might want to actually set in the mod settings. I might want to set stone to 200. just so that I don't spend all of it basically making stone bricks because that uh, 
That would be a problem, because I need stone to make furnaces to make burner miner drills at the start of the game. And to make boilers. Now, I do have a mod, this uh, KS power, that adds burner generator and wind turbine to try to get out of this phase a little bit sooner, but now we're going, we're going to go with steam engines and actual power. So now I will place those. We now have a complete encapsulation or encircula- or the screw words. We have encircled our little burner generator here, and that actually allows it to operate at peak efficiency. All the lights are green. See, see the lights? This is the bottleneck mod. So here they're red because they don't have, they don't have enough stone. And these guys have things in them, so they were yellow, but they don't have any thing to add to it. So next up, we need another burner generator that's here in resource refining. And then I need to go up. So our starting zone is defined as this little, this little area here, I guess. Because remember, I reduced the overall size of the starting zone to 25%. Uh, how many of these do I have? Enough. How many can I make? Enough. Uh, yeah, make that eight. There shall be eight. Also going to need to uh, get some more of that wood going. Alright, so we have significantly more uh, stereotite than uh, sapphire. That's not a good thing. That is not a good thing. Oh, that's actually an interesting graphic. This is the first time I'm actually noticing the uh, the shapes. Yeah, the, the little uh, whatever they are. One, two, three octagons. Yeah, I think they're the little, or maybe a mix of uh, different shapes. So this will be stereotyped. Now I will not need this many, uh, th that much production of the copper. Because that's what this will end up becoming, is copper. Now I'm just going to sit here and collect enough to get these eight moving. Not enough. Alright, now they're moving, so now I can just shift C after grabbing it. So that'll give me copper. Copper plates. Now what are the copper plates going to be used for? They're going to be used to make us wonderful electrical poles as well as inserters. The beautiful inserters. But <laughs> both of those also require wood. So I'm going to need to hunt for some wood. Oh, I'm so slow. Maybe in the process of hunting for wood, we'll uh, end up reviewing some, in particular, some more sapphire. I could use a very, very big patch of sapphire. Uh, now, you may have noticed when I made the game 
set up the map that I do have infinite ores on and they are at their default spawn settings, I really, really want to get to those infinite ores. Um, now, because we are also on default settings, I can't make use of them right off the bat. Infinite ores are, well, infinite. They behave exactly like uh, oil does in the base game. So when you are... Oh, that's Jivalite. That's good to know. That's there. And it has a little bit of infinite on it. I can tell because it has a combined yield right there. That's really low combined yield. Oh boy. And the way that this works with ores is that for any value greater than one per second, basically, um, once, once you have the miner on top of the infinite ore patch and it's mining, if it mines greater than one per second, a value of one per second, you will get a piece of ore every single tick or every, every single cycle of the miner. But if that value is less than one, it becomes a percentage based chance of producing a unit of ore for that for each cycle. So if it's 0.9, then it's a 90% chance. But if it's 0.1, it's only a 10% chance of producing an ore. Uh, I once attempted to uh, play on a map that only had infinite ores, which isn't actually so great at the start of a game when you don't have that great of mining drills because you're going to quickly end up in a situation where all of your mining drills on a patch in your starting zone at least will be producing at only 10% of their output until you get production efficiency technology which will increase it well, which will give you a guaranteed one unit every 10 cycles versus a 10% chance of one in 10 cycles. So it will approximately double your output when you do get that first tech. But that tech comes a long ways away. It's a rather long ways out, considering... And uh, it, it, it ends up taking a lot of time. And uh, yeah, I gave up on that one real, real, real fast once I realized what was going on with the uh, with the whole infinite ore thing. The, o the exclusively infinite ore thing. Because you, you can do that in the uh, RSO settings. You can set it so that all all ore is replaced with infinite ore variety. But I have that set to default settings for this particular map. For this go through, play through, whatever. Uh, this will definitely be a more difficult playthrough than the one that I just finished after. I have to remember to turn that clock GUI back on. Uh, after the previous one that I completed with. Uh, space extension getting the FTL drive and all that launching that uh, yeah that was hundred and fifty five hours and a lot of that was just learning a lot of the later game mechanics and learning exactly just how stupidly powerful uh, Bob's modules are Along with the uh, Mark III beacons, so that'll be that'll be fun to muck about with. All right, I think we have sufficiently wasted enough time. What we can now do is make an offshore pump. Uh, 
Have I built a boiler yet? I built a steam engine, but not a boiler. That's great. Boiler and one more steam engine. I have some sufficient number of poles. I will build a lab, and then we will need... Uh, we I can only build 24 units of science. Bob's Mods also changes the color of science to reflect the tier of belt that that science unlocks generally so you have it goes yellow red blue uh, purple and green but there's also a pink in there as an extra science and there's military gray science. All right, so we will make several units. I'll probably make more than 30, actually, but I will need at least 10 to start. Where do we want? All right, so first question is where do we want to actually place our power generation? Now, it doesn't directly have to be in front of the uh, pump. Not necessarily, but the closer it is, the better. Uh, I will need some pipes. I'll just... I'll make iron pipes for now, but we also could use copper or stone. Uh, in fact, the production of these types of pipes will uh, be decent sinks for... Uh, our stone and for our copper now as we progress through the game there will be different items that we will be having to deal with excessive amounts of at various different points in the game until we establish ways of actually consuming them uh, and stone slash stone bricks will be one of those in the early game. So let us now put down our... Where's the pump? There's the pump. So thinking about this in terms of how big it's going to end up being, I think the best place is probably in here for now. I always have to think about orientation and all that. Uh, I'm going to make a uh, one of those so that I can make sure that my it's also convenient that I have a coal patch with infinite coal right here and apparently infinite coal only requires water that's the other thing about the infinite uh, resources is that they will require some fluid or gas uh, in order to actually mine them. And in this case, this requires straight up water. So I need to think in which orientation am I going to have my boilers and my steam engines because of the way that this will scale. Now, do I want to scale up? Where do I want to scale right is the question. And to the right is more coal that I might want to use. North is some antitate at the moment that won't even be a bother. So I'm going to scale north, which means I'm also going to need enough space not to foul things up on the left here. So what I'm going to do is arbitrarily say we're going to start off 
here. And place our two steam engines there and place our boiler like so. Now what this will also mean is that I will have belts and inserters. That's the next things that we need to build. I'm actually going to... I'm going to do this. It's not the best, but... Nah. I'm going to want to have another offshore pump to feed another line of these facing right. So these face left. I'll have another one facing right. And there'll be essentially 20 on each side fed by two offshore pumps. And that's how we're going to do that at the start of the game. Then I need one here, one here. And then I'll place these ghosts because this is going to be how this will tile. So you, you can sort of see how this will tile. And then it's just the reverse, just right, inserter, belt, inserter. So that will go there. There'll be a belt in the middle for coal or some other fuel. And then, in this case, burner inserters on each side to feed them. Now, of course, I don't need these right now because I'm not producing. I don't I don't have those boilers yet. And then there'll be just the space in the middle. All right. So I could go and get that coal, but not right now because I will want to do this somewhat properly and actually have electric mining drills. Uh, I have a lab. The lab will of course start with automation. I will need some coal to feed this. And then I will need to give the lab some of that. So that's gonna go. I'm gonna run and grab more coal to manually feed this. But once I get some electric miners down on that actual coal patch nearby, plus the belts to feed it. I'm actually going to start setting up my hotkeys with uh, how I usually start the game. The various items that I usually start with. Where's... Where's you? I want chests there. I want the that there. All right, that just used all of my precious coal. time more belts belts are going to be the one thing in the early early game that uh, I will want a significant amount of it's gonna be a lot of slow running back and forth oh hey it's done what do I want next I want logistics Yes, because I want I want the underground belts and the splitters. Alright, welcome back, power. Our whole 60 kilowatts that we are currently using. So these belts are ever so slightly faster than they used to be in base Bob's mods. 
They now move at 15 items per second versus 12.5. Of course, that's in total. Uh, it is half that on each lane. I only have one miner. Oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. Now, I'm uncertain if this would actually start mining like that. Even though it's going to start by mining the actual resource before the fluid. Either way, it's just water. It's like I could just pipe in water and be and just say, oh hey, we are we are infinite. We are infinite and we don't have to worry about coal. In fact, I'm going to do exactly that. Of course, I'm going to need a lot more than just six of those. Hello. Um... So this is the completely and utterly overpowered item called the pump. That, uh... I'm not sure I actually have the recipes for uh, that will magically create uh, water out of nothing. Probably don't want that next. Just as an aside, probably not next. Greenhouse would be nice. As would wood processing, but... Uh, Greenhouses, Bob's greenhouses, at the very least, at the start of the game, require glass. In order to get glass, I need to sort uh, Bobmonium for silicon. It will give you tin and silicon. In order to sort, you need mechanical refining. So we are going to get mechanical refining next, although we are going to be, you know, limited because I only have five thingies in there right now, and this is a tech that takes 20. And I currently need to uh, craft stuff. And you just know that all of this is temporary as we are starting up our base. Now, I built this like this. It really shouldn't be like that. It should be... I'm probably going to build it so that it comes out this way and have these guys set up like so. Now, how are you going to power all that? Well, good question. I don't have an answer to that right now. Probably, for now, a bit like this. And uh, this has answered my question. Yes, it will mine and work without the fluid if it also has access to a regular ore. So as long as it has access to a regular ore as well, it will not need the fluid. I am also completely blocking access to the fluid uh, for that one. So I have to go out one more. It's not going to require much water, but it will require water. So I will build an offshore pump. It will be built there. I will need some more pipe to ground, although do I really want to be spending my iron on this pipe to ground? No. In fact, I think I'm going to use some stone, and I think I'm actually going to be bad 
very, very bad and likely ruin some people's days by having just spaghetti of all of this these stone bricks because this is going to be how we use our stone in the beginning of the game is building paths speaking of stone I have a significant amount of crushed stone in my inventory right now my inventory Oh, right, this is... Oh, joy, um... Yeah, pipe distance is a lot smaller at the start of the game than what I am used to. Alright, give me... Give me stuff and things. All of the stuff and things. Give me, give me all of that. Thanks. I might cancel that partway through. So. Order of operations. I'm going to need a lot of belts. I'm going to need to pipe some power out here. I'm going to need some more electric mining drills. I'm, 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 I need all of the things. Okay. Can we can we understand it as as that concept of all of the things? Assembling machines are also quite important. And I will need to start getting science automated. So many things to do now, now that we are transitioning away from the burner phase. Into more efficient processes. Yeah, you, you, can, you can stop that now, thanks. Far more efficient processes. I'm just clearing some space. Don't mind me. Uh, how many people would be triggered if I decided that I wanted to uh, have different types of pipes on this path? Ooh, I wonder. Okay, you officially want the fluid. Why do you now magically want the fluid? Also, you see here how it says 0 0.7 per second, even though on the expected resources it says 6.9 per second. I have yet to fully understand why it is such a smaller number between the expected and the actual. So this will only produce one unit of coal 70% of the time. All right, I'll go ahead and uh... make some of this. Remember how I said we have excess copper at the start of the game? We're gonna do this this way. And ta-da! Stuff and things and things and stuff. Uh, note that they all get the, the water will flow through things like uh, just like boilers. It, the water will flow through the boilers. The water will also flow through uh, our miners. So this one's at 0. 0.6. 
Ah, I see. It will randomly, occasionally, decide that it wants to... Oh... Okay, so... You see this little blue, like, Cian box uh, around our shadow of our miner? That's the area that the miner is actually mining. The way I think it works is that it will pick a tile, it will pro and it probably just cycles through top left to bottom right. Just going the full top row, then the next row, then the next row, then the next row, each cycle. So it will only produce based off of the specific singular tile that it is mining. Oh my goodness. So that that explains why expected resources is 6.7 because that is the added total of all of the tiles that it currently covers but it only mines a single tile at a time, a single tile for each, quote, craft, each time it uh, cycles. So that's why it will differ 0 0.8, 0 0.7. Sometimes it won't. This one is guaranteed because it's pulling one of the 22K that it's over. So because it's overlapping these tiles here that aren't uh, infinite and it will mine those until they run out and then it will only cycle the tiles that have the infinite ore on it gotcha I understand I now understand I fully comprehend, well, I comprehend at minimum. Alright, so you're going to be moved. You are going to be extended. Uh, I am going to need Bob Monium, so that's why I'm placing all that there. There's a non-zero amount of sapphirite there, so may as well mine it. I am not looking forward to having to uh, hunt down my source of iron. Won't have to worry so much about copper, but it's the, the iron that bothers me. All right, so step one, I want you into, into a chest. To process all of my stone. Crushed stone into stone. Where is that recipe? There it is. So that'll now turn my excess crushed stone into stone for me. I could also put a uh, furnace there and have it give me some stone bricks, but unfortunately it needs to be fed with a source of fuel, so I won't, uh, I won't be doing that today. Science. Alright. Science is next. Science will be... I need... I need gears. A box. The science. And... A the lab. Wow. 
Y. Uh, and, all oh, right, inserters, inserters, inserters. Where do I usually have inserters? Here, these four. And you'll, you'll see why four later, but. All right, you are those, you are that, you get that. Congratulations! We now have a source of science. It needs to get uh, its iron manually, but we'll work on that. Science will now move. More important. That's, that's the important part, I think, is that it will now be moving. I have some bricks. Let us place down some bricks. they have been placed. I can grab the stone whenever I want and uh, just shift C. Make myself some more bricks out of it. Now we can think about how we're going to scale Always be scaling. That is that is going to be our theme. I think I want a radar to help reveal the map around me. I'm going to be needing lots of miners. Oh, hello! Yeah, that's uh, convenient. Thank you for this. So, Sapphirite, wherefore art thou? There. Is that it? There's more up there. Really? Really, game? Ah, oh, you give you give me plenty of sources of sorting for uranium, technically, but not like I I don't even use Elian Gate, and I don't even use uh, the alluvium or oil sands or mo most of the stuff that is introduced by Mad Clowns mods. I I use his antitate for one thing only much much later in the game i and i would use sanguinate which i don't see any sanguinate yeah we don't there's no sanguinate close by oh there it is there it is hello sanguinate there's phosphorite, I, again, something I don't really use, but only two units of sapphirite here. At least it's close to a steertite up there. And it, it's, of course, it's super far away from our jivalite. We have three, three, four, four sources of jivalite close to us, which would also give us iron. Uh, I'm I'm just I'm thinking for the future. Don't mind me as I as I make schemes and plans. Hello. Speaking of schemes and plans, plans and schemes. I think I need you. Oh, but right, red science. Uh, not ready for that yet. Probably not ready for basic chemistry yet, either. Ugh. Hmm. 
Doesn't this need to be rebalanced? There's currently not a need. Where do I get barreling? Where do I get barreling? Well, this leads to coal processing, so I will need that, at least. Ah, greenhouse will be next. All right. So, more power. I haven't happened to build more steam engines yet. That's sad. So, something about building at scale that I learned very recently, over the past couple of days while uh, playing. Do I want... Uh, this is to trust. Trust me, this will help. This will help save some time. Uh, think about building at scale and pipes. Uh, pipes are evil. I'm just. I'm just gonna throw throw that out into the ether. Uh, Pipes in Factorio are legitimately evil beings and should be avoided at all costs. <laughs> Always be barreling is uh, going to be uh, the theme of the whole petrochemical process uh, in this game is, uh, yeah, always be barreling. And let's not even start on... Uh, on a main bus because oh man I have issues with using a main bus but if if it works it works and it's actually somewhat efficient but my god the resources it requires to build and the amount of space it's going to take oh boy So what are we actually going to be doing? Well, the way that I tend to build is I'm going to make a factory that gives us enough science of all of the different types of sciences and enough of a mall to get us going. To get us through all of the regular technologies. Once we are through all of the regular technologies, we will then have this little thing called SpaceX, where these technologies start at 60k for the amount of science required the amount of science packs required. And then you get into this little thing called faster than light theory. It is seven techs each requiring two million units of science. Uh, that'll be when we start building for scale. We'll, we'll be building at a scale capable of producing several rockets at a time a, a couple a few two maybe three silos worth of rockets at a time or maybe one or two without an interruption without modules or beacons uh, so if you have any idea as to scale without using modules or, or beacons it will be effin' huge, to say the least. 
Uh, and our main bus will be in sets of six. Maybe, maybe a bit more to start, but it will depend on how long it takes us to get out of yellow belts once we get to yellow belts. But it will be sets of six because of yellow belts at the beginning. Uh, and their limitations. And uh, it will be approximately 24 to 48 sets of six wide. Um, yeah. Now, think about how wide that is. Think about how many belts that is. How many units of belts that is to feed things. Um, welcome to Angel's Mods. <laughs> uh, and, and Bob's, but Angel's in particular. <laughs> Uh, because that's uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be life going forward. Now I'm just running around doing various non things at the moment. Uh, I sh when I should be doing actual things, waiting for tech. Um, yeah, let's get that. In fact, let's get some of this going. Build that one there, so that we can build that one there. And then this will come out. I need belts. I can... Uh, I can automate belts. Um, yeah, I can automate belts. Let's do that. Ta-da! We have automated belts. I just, again, we have the issue of having to feed this box with iron at the moment. Eventually, we can have robots do that for us, but for now, we have to do it ourselves. Oh, oh. you used all the iron already. That's right, this will also use a lot of iron. Also, plonk. Radar, Bloodseeker, or zero, 00. The, the names on these things. Alright, so that will reveal this to us at all times. But more importantly, it'll also, you know, start cleaning up some of the mess around us. Slowly but surely. All right, since I have you. Now, what am I going to do with Bobmonium? Well, for those who've played before, you might know what I want to do. What I want to do will require an ore sorting facility and has need of a lot of iron. I'm probably doing this a little bit too early, but so what? I don't care. Oh right, I have... The game gives you ten of the better belts at the start by default for some reason. Yes, one of those... Do I really want to do this before actually setting up electric miners here and automating iron plates and 
copper plates. Uh, I suppose I will. Because it's not like I need a lot. So the process I'm thinking of is I need silicon for glass. So I need to sort bobmonium for it'll give us tin and silicon and slag. Uh, and then I guess step one is crush. So you crush, you sort, you make stones. So you crush, you sort. Um, I'll just stick this into a, uh, I need more boxes. Stick it into a box. And then I have to um, I need another one of these. We've already played for an hour, by the way. And once I get through this setup, I will be taking my break. This will not take very long. In fact, it's only going to be about three minutes before I take my break. Um... That... That, no, that way, that way. This is, this is a bit of a hack job, to be completely honest, but, uh, it will work, quote unquote, work. Now, how am I going to split silicon from tin? Well, there's this handy little feature called a filter in, uh, in splitters that was apparently introduced fairly, fairly recently. And I can just split off the silicon from the tin. So, hooray! I now have silicon! I now need to get some stone furnaces. I will need to pipe in coal for those furnaces. For now, I will feed those fur these furnaces uh, myself with coal myself and get that in, get that in. And these will feed boxes. Uh, and this is exclusively to get some glass. This is just for glass. All right, I came here for what now? Coal, of course. And then I distribute what coal I have, and then... Whoops. Alright, so I have that now. Let's get the basic chemistry. Shift-C, and we are now making glass. So... Greenhouses, four glass, five iron plates, two stone. Builds wood from wood. More more wood from wood. That is the uh, whole point of greenhouses. Now that we have a source of glass and can start building greenhouses from that to give us a source of wood, to give us automated production ultimately of wooden boards for basic circuit boards 
I'm going to take a break, uh, grab some lunch. Uh, I will be back in no more than 15 minutes. I will be here. I will eat with the camera off. We'll be on this screen. And uh, I will be back. Hope you uh, have been enjoying. Uh, the VOD on YouTube will, of course, uh, be skipping this break. Be back soon. So, welcome back, everyone. I have officially finished eating and have returned fully. Uh, I've just spent the last, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so, uh, rambling about plans and schemes and our path forward. So, right now we're working on basic chemistry, and I do want to get coal processing, but maybe the first thing to get before coal processing will end up being uh, electrolysis 1 to get steel. Uh, in particular, because I sort of I want the steel axe upgrade, which increases mining speed by 100%, but I also want the things that this unlocks, which uh, it unlocks quite a bit, as you can see here. It, unlo it unlocks quite a number of things, uh, some of which is very important things. I don't need the artifact stuff, though. It's interesting that this is all enabled, even though I don't really think I'll be using it. It unlocks a lot of red texts red science techs, but uh, it also unlocks, you know, mining drill, be better mining drills, but all of all of this stuff will require not only the steel, but also basic electronic boards, and uh, yeah, that'll, that'll require other things that we need other techs for, in particular coal processing for carbon to make uh, basic electronic components, to make basic uh, electronic circuits or boards, I guess is what they're called. So, stuff and things, plans and schemes. Starting out though, I think it's time. How many? I don't have any miners, okay. It is time to say goodbye to this. Like the song, time to say goodbye. Uh, just as soon as I finish my handcrafting. Oh, I, I am bad because I haven't turned me back on. I am here. There we go. I am bad, and you can see my handcrafting. Got back from my lunch, didn't turn me back on. Hello, me. Welcome back to the land of the living. So we are now going to work on actually automating the production of the steel so I don't have to be sitting here this whole time. And it's going to be... It's going to feel really good by doing this. Uh, the only, well, the issue primarily is not infinite and tiny. I will need coal to feed the furnaces to continue making iron and to make copper and all that. So I will need a lot of belts. Belts, I don't really have right now. And by by a lot of belts, I mean I will need a lot of belts. And I'm gonna need a lot more than just four little miners. Because I'm gonna saturate this, I'm gonna mine this out. And I will be very sad once we are 
out of this stuff. Just wire this all up. Hello, ores. So now I have to think about if I'm going to extend this. Of course, issue being just the sheer number of belts that is required for this is astronomical for this phase of the game. So I may have to just manually feed for a little bit our line, which our line may as well plan. I'm thinking I'm going to have our bus be to the south? Hmm. That's about the only thing I know about this map is that there's water here, so... Do I want my bus to go this way? Or this way? I don't want it to overlap important resources at the start. So I'm thinking it's going to go to the right. In my previous base, it went to the south. In this base, it's going to go to the right and be a horizontal bus. Now, it's going to be so freaking huge that it may as well be overlapping here if I start it up, like, right here. So I want it to, like, at least start over here. It'll probably be about yay wide. Uh, which means that my feeding of it at the start will be about here. Now this method of doing this is not my own. Let's be completely clear on that. Of course. Of course I won't I won't actually have the inserters for this, but uh oh well. We'll we'll do things manually. Now, the question I need to ask myself is do I want less poles or less space? And I think the solution, I think this time around, I'm going to go with less space. So you have two options when doing this this particular way. You can either do it like this and have units like this and it just repeats with a, with a space in between for a power pole. Uh, and that way you only need the one power pole to feed the inserter that spits out and the inserter that feeds your lines. Uh, this, of course, makes the furnace line longer by necessity. Uh, or, you can conserve space and not have the gap, but then you need two poles. Well, you need, you need three poles where you previously would only need two. So you would need 
to have just more, more of stuff and things. Now, of course, this could be pushed a full tile back, but I like having the extra room in case I need to bring anything to and fro. Now, I'm going to just... Actually, the way, the way I like doing this... Uh, if I had the space, it would look so much prettier, but, uh, no, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to do it this way just to be different this time. Ooh, that music is, uh, a little bit loud. Yeah, let's, uh, let's take that music a little bit now. All right, so, hmm. Of course, I need to actually, you know, connect it to my network. Now, the way this will work is I will have a source of coal coming in. Now, unfortunately, the way I have this oriented now my main source of coal is up here, so it'll have to come down, and then over, and then down. But it'll, it'll come down, and I'm going to have several units of these side by side. Uh, so I'll have the coal coming down, and then it will split, and it will jump and feed in that side. Now, the question would be, do I jump here? Well, no, because I would need to split the coal and that would lead to, that would lead to having to do that with the splitter there. And that doesn't look very nice. So what I'll do, I'll have to define exactly where I want the coal coming in. I'll probably try to do this at least somewhat with the lowest amount of belts I can, which is like this. And then the coal line will run from here. And I should have it absolute. Oh, right, it. Oh boy, I am. I am out of it today, clearly. Here I am trying to feed ore directly into these machines when it needs to be crushed first. <laughs> yes, I have to crush it first. That's that's the. Uh, that's the thing I just remembered. Yep, it needs to be crushed first. And I, do I even have the thing handy? I have a burner crusher handy. Um, here, do that. That's the thing I just remembered. It happens. <laughs> It happens. And of course, since I broke down the whole system, I now have no feeding. So I guess, I guess we're back to this. Because I just, I just don't have enough to make this transition yet, clearly. Clearly, I just... There, there's not enough 
to go to more. Which is sad. Well, we can at least get more copper going. Not like I really need the copper right now. I do have these burner inserters, so I, in a pinch I could use those. But I prefer only using them for the uh, boilers. And even then, at some point, I'll be using belts that move the fuel too fast for the burners to actually uh, insert properly. Alright, so grab that. Take this. Insert into these. All because I need more iron to build a crusher. Yeah, the burners are okay as long as the belt's full, but if you're talking about trying to feed 20 actually feed 40 boilers off of one line then depending on how fast the line is by the time you get to the end uh, you're gonna run, run into problems a line that's 20 on each side so yeah that that's that's when you, you run into problems <laughs> But only once you, of course, are consuming enough power for that to matter. You can end up uh, being in a death spiral if your inserter's not working fast enough to feed the machines because they're just requiring too much fuel for what your fuel gives you. Let's not forget to make actual inserters. And this is why I want to transition away from steam. Or at least away from boiler-based steam. Uh, about as quickly as I can. There's lots of things in my previous playthrough that I finished off this morning, actually, that uh, I learned and that I want to make sure that I do sooner. And uh, transitioning away from boilers is one of those things. Now, as a matter of personal preference, moving forward, I do want to mention I hate um, the type of ore sorting that I'm currently doing to get glass. I do not like doing that type of ore sorting, so when I transition away from or into metallurgy, which uh, I could work on next. I want steel processing, so I need chemical processing. Yes, yeah, so I don't. I don't like the ore sorting that gives you a bunch of different types of ores to have to deal with. Because uh, I don't like dealing with them. So instead, I will tend to... Really, this isn't... Uh, I just don't have the inserters. Uh, I don't have the wood. Oh, joy. 
time to go hunting for wood. Oh, and of course the other thing I had mentioned with uh, greenhouses, yes they give you wood, but they do consume a non-zero amount of water. No. That way. This is just here for convenience. It will be my source of wood. Where's the... There it is. Now, this says five seedlings uh, per unit of wood. This is a lie. Uh, it is actually a an average of five, but it is a random value that you get. It is random how much you get. See, that just gave me one. Uh, I think it's anywhere from one to ten or something, and it averages to five. And it's so slow. But it'll give me 15 units of wood. And it, I made enough for two cycles. Nanobots will be nice once I get there. I could get there quickly, but there's my way and then there's the fast way. And I only can really do one of those ways. And no, that's not the final position of that greenhouse. Of course it's not. You... You... Hey, slag! This is the problem not having filters. Uh, do I use my last splitter to split in case that happens again split slag and feed it back here no and yes I am totally getting what I need to make another standard ore crusher even though I know I have one from the glass production that I could use for the far more important iron plate production I'm just choosing not to. I am choosing to make one separately. I apparently can make a bunch separately. But uh, anyway, this ore sorting of the crushed sapphirite and the crushed uh, steratite and all that, that gives you iron and copper. I don't like that recipe so much. But tree prisons are so important. Yes, they are. That, what, that's why I'm making a lot of them. But actually, I think I have a relatively sufficient number for the moment. So this ore sorting that I have to get silicon, I don't like it. I, I don't like it because you end up with this situation where I specifically want the silicon, not really the tin at the moment. Yet, I can't control how much tin I'm producing with this. Fortunately, there are ways, or there is a method, there are recipes for getting just iron, just copper, lead, tin, and all of that. It requires tech. To get the silicon, it requires red science tech. And, uh, a lot of things I don't really like, but, uh, yeah. So when I was complaining earlier about the, uh, sapphirite on this map being a significant distance away from the jivalite, know that it's specifically because of this recipe for iron that requires the mineral catalyst crushed sapphirite and crushed jibbolite. So with them being so far apart from each other, oh, that's going to be fun. It's 
gonna be tedious. Actually. Very, very tedious. Meow. Is the cat complaining to me about something? Um. Okay, so. Splitters. Splitters. More. More. Trains! Ha! I I don't I don't I don't like trains. I don't like trains. But I did I did say when I made this map that I sort of wanted to learn trains. Why did I just do that? Why did I do that? There. Cause sure sure I I could I could do trains, but I make no guarantees as to any efficiency. I have a mod called Logistics Train Network that is incredibly complicated that I it I think it will make my brain hurt a little bit figuring it out. But I, it's one of those things that where once I figure it out it will make complete and total magical sense to me and I will wonder why I hadn't been using it the entire time. There's a, there, there's a lot of systems like that uh, in these mods that uh, I've come to notice. This is not a good position for this. Well, yes, I know. I know you continue to be hungry even after giving you food at lunch. Cat meowing in the background. Where is... What am I looking for? I don't know what I'm looking for. Everything has completely slipped into the ether of my mind. I have many of these. Uh, how do I want to... do this. So, let us make two of these. Have four going in, four going out. You crush that. I will need a splitter to split off the crushed stone. The crushed stone will go to one of those. That will make stone from crushed stone. Uh, eventually we will be able to convert this crushed stone into a fluid that we can void with a building called a clarifier that will just get rid of it. It will be demolished. And then wire that up and should do the trick, maybe? And a doink in that uh, that at least gives us that. Then we have to think about all of the inserters. And all of the transport belts. We have st We have iron! Hello, iron. How good of you to join the party. Huzzah! Huzzah! Finally some iron. You know what? Just screw it. 
I have 157 glass. I think that will be relatively sufficient. Because when I make the treehouse line, it'll be... Eh. You know what? I want it to be 40 on each side. Uh, 20 on each side of what I build. So 40 total. Minimum. Previous space, I think my line was... Oh, over 100 on each side. Something like that. Never even came close to using all of it. <laughs> On a base that was consuming over a hundred... Uh, ooh, you're facing the wrong direction, aren't you? Alright, I forget how... Alright, no, it just die. That picks that up for me. Why build small if you build it big? Yes, exactly. I built it big and I never really made use of it and it just became even more overkill when I transitioned it into the secondary recipe with fertilizer, which uh, reduces it from 80 total seconds down to 60 for the cycle uh, total seconds. It'll, it says 45, but the greenhouse's 0.75 speed. Um, and it produces twice the amount of wood in that time. It goes up. I did it again, didn't I? Yes, I did. All of these. All of these. So, I had plenty of wood to feed the uh, production of the wooden boards. Uh, of course, I do want to put uh, inserters. Oh, right. Do not forget to... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? What I should do... To make sure that I don't forget... Oh, I picked, I picked it up, right. Oh joy! Even though I know I'm going to continue to need more before I even build the dedicated area for it. <sighs> Don't build five. Build this for me so that you can make the seedlings. This is incredibly overkill considering one of these, um, one of these assembling machines can actually feed entire lines of the uh, greenhouses. They get the most basic, they feed at least 20 each. And then as you actually increase the tier of the assembler, it uh, just is more, feeds more by itself. Doesn't even need anything. Alright, so that should be... Ahem. I don't have enough, do I? Please produce enough to start the cycle. And there we go. Now, what this will do for me, just get a couple more chests, and apparently I will need more power poles, which... Beautiful. 
Hello, tree. Give me more power pulls. <laughs> that will feed into the box. It will also feed the machines that will feed the seedlings back. Now, blue dots. Hello, blue dot. I should have been looking for blue dots from the very beginning. So on the map, you'll notice these things. The blue dots are trees that are part of Angel's bioprocessing, if I'm not mistaken. These, uh, these trees give you 100 units of wood. Should have gone after them sooner. Do not have to worry about doing all this shenaniganry from the beginning. But, well... Mine it! Slash, chop it down. And we get a desert tree for that. I have no intention of doing anything with regards to the farming or any of that. So we're a bit backed up here. Always a good sign. I'm going to feed boxes. For now. Theoretically, I could, you know, start building a bus and actually automate my yellow science, but uh, there's a couple of extra things that I'd like to do. Eh, screw it. We'll. We'll start planning, at least, for the bus. Now, what side of the bus do I want to build on? Well, I, by necessity, have to build on the top side if we're moving to the right horizontally. But is there actually enough space for me to do that? Because I would want to build infinitely... Theoretically, infinitely, in whatever direction is perpendicular to the belt, to the to the main bus. So, just thinking about that, I have a ton of stuff to the north of the belt, of, of the bus. And the bus can be, in, will be incredibly wide. Incredibly wide. Many, many, many sets of six wide. Um, so either I build it further south, start it further south to give myself extra space to build up at the start, or I change what direction I actually build the bus in. This will only matter to here. After after this line, after after the coal here is when it will start to matter. Well, slash when it will cease mattering. I should I should point that out because I can build just fine to the north over here. It's only in here that it's somewhat constrained and then if I build backwards quote unquote backwards from the belt that from the bus this way I have this water body to deal with but otherwise it's fine. Let's say that the bus will start here. Now, in current iteration, I only can have a spacing of two. Alright, so 
this right here will eventually become six. And then I have a space of two, and then this will be two sets of six. Multiply this by... Actually, no, not. Let's, let's not. Let's get a better visualization of this. So this will be six. That'll be six. That'll be six. That's three. Yeah, t times that by a bunch of, as Catherine of Sky would say. And that will give you an idea of how big this bus is going to be. Out of my way, Rock. I should probably be doing this with ghosts, but... In fact, let's, let's actually do this with ghosts. Wrong button. This gonna yeah that's gonna place ghosts for me so how many is that so far one two three four five six seven eight nine that's ten so that whole comment about uh why build small when you can build big uh, <clears throat> cough 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 this is one of those moments. So, how does a uh, hundred and twenty sound? We just that's tw that's twenty sets of six. <laughs> as a uh, as a main bus. And this, of course, is belts, not, uh, not, not fluids. See, when I, when I said it's going to be wide, I, I meant I meant it's going to be wide. <laughs> um, my previous base had I think it it was a, a set of six by six and then a fluid bus of six by six and then no it, it wasn't six by six it was two by six and then more belts and then more fluid but yes I will be barreling so the reason why the bus is going to be so wide is because I'm not going to have a fluid bus. It's because I'm going to be barreling my fluids. Because at scale, pipes suck. <laughs> at scale, pipes are awful to deal with. Uh, especially over distance. You just cannot push enough reasonably to... Uh, To get done what you need to get done. They lose yeah, they lose pressure. You end up having a full storage tank with pumps pumping out of it at the start of the chain, but by the end of the chain, you, all of your consumers are complaining that they don't have enough. Because of how the system of pressure works for pipes. And even putting pumps at every single section of undergrounds going along the line trying to conserve resource at least to attempt to conserve some sort of resources uh, from your pumps it's still not going to end up being enough at, high, at large enough scale to matter but barreling that works Particularly barreling when you have uh, a bunch of robots to move the barrels for you. Uh, now, I've placed ghosts for 
a ton of lines for this, but eventually everything's gonna move by robots. Anyway, at least the the barrels will consistently. I'm gonna have as much as I can on the belts because the belts will be superior for a very, very long time. And yes, it is a big drain on steel to make the the barrels that you need for it. And I will want to have uh, red and green wires. The, the ability to make red and green wires so that when I set up the production of the barrels, I can limit it to uh, a certain amount of barrels being produced. So that they'll go into a container and then as they get removed from that container for use in the system and then coming back in the meantime as a buffer uh, storage I can say hey only produce more barrels if the amount of barrels in this container falls below a certain value and that'll be something insane like 5,000 or something like that and I'll end up producing until there's that many in the storage uh, and stay in the storage that so all the others are being used in the system no matter how many are being used in the system there will always be that many in that storage minimum anyway I should really get to actual production how does that sound spending all this time no, I don't want copper pipes right now, thanks. Am I making stuff and things? Oh, I apparently made a, a bunch of that. That's cool. Here, have, uh, have resources. Make more. Make more transport belts in science, please. Splitter? Yes, I, I actually have a splitter. Now, how do I want to run this line? Do I want to run this line... I'm just thinking, because I'm going to want some coal miners dedicated to feeding the, the power. I'll get to that when I get to that. I'm not even going to want to have coal feeding my power anyway, so let's consider that as later a later thing to worry about no why i'm going i'm going to need a uh some landfill for that this is why i need all of you all of the things Welcome coal to the line. I now no longer have to worry about any of this. This it's done. This is done. I can pull this down. I shouldn't be pulling this down the, from there, but not that line. This is why I want steel axe to make this process faster. Let's me fix my mistakes faster. <laughs> of course, nothing's going to actually go to the bus because I'm sort of pulling all of the iron off the line and into chests, but it's because I need to for the moment. 
as I continue the setup. Because the setup is going to be... How many? How many? Uh, ch ch copper, lead, stone bricks, tin, I think that's, I think that's what I need. Ah, right. Duh. I will need steel. But steel is different. Because steel takes plates. So if I... So I'll have to adjust... But I can say I'll have that for steel for now. For now. All of this, all, all of it except for the one that I have for stone bricks, will be demolished when once I set up metallurgy. Which I will only set up after getting access to um, to the individual ore sorting for iron and copper and all that, which will require uh, mineral catalysts, which recently changed their recipe. Well, they, it changed the machine to craft them in. Now, instead of crafting into from a assembling machine, you now craft them in a crystallizer, which... Crystallizer's bigger, <laughs> but otherwise I can adjust. Just have a have a line making the uh, catalysts. Fortunately enough, there are these things that I think I currently can make called electrolyzers. <laughs> that uh, provide an infinite source of mineral catalysts by providing an infinite source of slag. <laughs> you know, the whole basis of the mod uh, C block. That's how you get your resources in C block <laughs> is through the uh, standard water electrolysis producing slag. The whole point is you want the slag in C block so that you can actually produce your minerals. Your materials, I should say. The ores. But here, instead of the ores from the slag, I want the slag slurry that you then have to filter into mineral slurry that you then have to produce catalysts that then go to ore sorting to produce the individual ore of choice iron, copper, tin, lead then mad clowns, mods, add a few extras to that. So that'll be a fun transition. That will take time. For now though, we're going to run furnaces. In fact, I should be scaling! Why am I not scaling? Scale! Build all of the mining drills. And why am I not collecting my wood and my 212 more basic transport belts that are sitting around doing nothing? 
Speaking of which, I need splitters. Pick up my production of wood. Always nice. Come in, just grab about 400 wood. Just gonna point out Bob's greenhouses are stupendously overpowered compared to what they, uh, their equivalent in angels, I should say. Why is this not... Ah! That would be why. It's already running out of coal in that spot. This is really small starting resources. I am... I am not used to this. One of these needs to be my miners, so that I don't forget that they exist, as I am wont to do. That's not the right spot. That's the spot. You need to move. Do I really want to pipe that this far when I know I need to crush it? Because let's not forget to crush again. <laughs> Give me iron. All of my iron. Thank you. Give me splitters, too. Splitters first, then these. Remember when I decided to siphon off some, uh, some gear wheels? Yeah, this, 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 now is the time. Yeah, who would forget important stuff, huh? Just think about how I want to route this. This is going to be complete and total spaghetti. Filter the... Crushed to the other side. Because conveniently, I can run that there. Whoops. Hello, science. Coal process. Coal processing. And this is copper. Praise the axe! Yes, praise the axe. I can now uh, repair errors faster.
I do hope that's enough inserters for that machine making rocks. Now let us set this up. Wow, do I actually have a sufficient number of inserters to run this? I can't believe I thought that far ahead. These will also go to boxes for now. Now, question of the day. Do I have enough resources? Yes, I do. To run the coal to feed it. And apparently I do. So we have iron and we have copper. And that is likely going to be that for the stream. As sad as that is, as much as I would like to continue, uh, I have work to do the rest of the day. We have reached the end. There's three more minutes of talking, I guess, before ending things off. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, a good point here to take a break as I... Yeah, this, this was stupid, just running it like that. But because I'm going to have to bring that down to there you know what <clears throat> uh the the solution is always more right so i'm just gonna do it like that and i'm gonna move that directly straight so things will be straight anyway it's a good stopping point for now because we have now automated the iron plates and the copper plates and semi sorta gotten glass and tin, although this is going to be replaced. We have coal, we have power, probably we'll be needing more power very shortly. And we have wood going, which really that was that was my goal for this entire stream was just get greenhouses. Um but we're through the burner phase. Burner phase is done. It is kaput. We no longer need them uh, at all. I can demolish what's there. This probably has some copper in it to grab, plus some coal that I will go ahead and grab. And now we have iron, we have copper. That means we now have gear wheels, we have belts, we also have stone to make stone bricks, we have everything that we need to start automating our production of not only the basic transport belts, but also the underground belts and the splitters because we have the wood. We can also start uh, making our basic circuit boards because we have our wood. We have the wood, we have the copper, we can make basic circuit boards now. So that'll be what we do tomorrow, same time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you then.